At first glance, you might think the largest threats of the ancient Colombian swamps were gargantuan predators like Titanoboa or prehistoric crocodiles. But the real shock, one of the biggest, most resilient creatures wasn't a predator at all, Al, it was a turtle. Carbonomies, Cafrini stretched nearly six feet in shell length and wielded jaws powerful enough to crush a small crocodile's skull. Yet its enormous armored body raises a bigger question. Was Carbonomies truly prey to anyone? Or was this turtle untouchable in a world of giants? That's the mystery paleontologists are still unraveling. Life along the swamp's edge in the early Paleocene was harsh, unpredictable, and filled with strange giants. The Terrahon Formation in northern Colombia, dated to about 60 million years ago, preserves a vision of this lost world, a warm, humid forest crisscrossed by slow rivers, shallow lakes, and low-lying swamps. Water covered much of the terrain year-round, shaping ecosystems where many species adapted to amphibious lifestyles. Carbonomies, with its immense shell and massive body, was built for this setting. It could drift through channels with broad, deliberate strokes surface to breathe then sink back into the water where its size and armor gave protection. On land, though, its weight and awkward limbs worked against it, so the swamp itself offered both home and refuge. Researchers suggest that gigantism likely required expansive home ranges, which may explain why only one large specimen has yet been uncovered at Cherihon. For adults, the real danger came only when reproduction forced them to leave the water. Females almost certainly had to haul out onto the banks to deposit eggs dragging shells that stretched nearly six feet across soft mud and tangled vegetation. Unlike in water where their bulk meant security on land, they were slowed to a crawl. This made nesting trips hazardous, exposing individuals to predators that could launch attacks from concealment or strike during the return to water. Such journeys were short, but carried enormous evolutionary stakes. Without them, no new generation could emerge. Feeding opportunities were diverse, but dictated by seasonal cycles of rainfall and plant growth. Gigantism came with unusual dietary demands and carbonomize needed broad access to food compared to smaller turtles. Its large skull and powerful jaws allowed it to exploit a wide menu crushing mollusks and snails for mineral seizing fish in the murky channels or scavenging when the chance arose. Fruits and seeds also became part of its diet. Fossil plants from the Kerahon formation include large nuts, palm seeds and ferns, some similar to modern avocados. These would have fallen into rivers or floated at the edges of swamps, ready to be consumed directly or indirectly through prey animals. This flexible diet likely helped the turtle remain stable, even in years when certain resources were scarce. Yet Carbonomies endured. It did not depend on speed like the hunters around it. Instead, it relied on a trio of traits that worked in concert immense size that deterred most threats armor that blunted attacks and a crushing jaw that made nearly anything edible. Few animals could achieve such balance in this environment, but Carbonomies secured its niche by combining these defenses and feeding adaptations into a reliable survival strategy. Imagine walking through a Paleocene swamp and seeing a turtle pass beneath the water's surface, its shell stretching nearly as tall as a person standing nearby. Carbonomies had a carapace around 1.72 meters long, about five feet, eight inches, and some estimates put a full specimen closer to 1.8 meters. That length is comparable to a large leatherback sea turtle, but the difference is crucial. Leatherbacks roam the open ocean, spreading their weight across vast hunting grounds. Carbonomies carried that same length and mass in a shallow, closed swamp system, an environment where most freshwater turtles rarely exceed a few feet. In that context, its size wasn't only impressive, it was exceptional, pushing the limits of what a swamp ecosystem seemed able to sustain. Armour defined its survival. In Terrahon's waterways filled with predators that could overpower most animals, Carbonomies carried protection that set it apart. Dense layers of bone, fused into a dome that functioned like a biological fortress capable of withstanding the constant risks posed by crocodilians and other large reptiles in the swamp. This kind of defense shifted the rules, forcing predators to weigh the cost of an attack against the slim chance of success. At Sherahon, paleontologists have recovered smaller podocnamid turtle shells dotted with deep puncture marks that align closely with crocodilian tooth spacing and shape. These scars tell us that mid-sized turtles regularly fell victim to ambushes at the water's edge, pulled into rolls and torn apart by jaws built for crushing. Yet when researchers examined remains belonging to Carbonomies, they noted something different. Fragments carried cracks from compression and time, but no clear bite marks suggesting consistent attacks. 
This absence doesn't prove predators ignored it altogether, but it does support the idea that fully grown adults with shells near six feet long and far thicker than their smaller relatives were difficult and energetically costly to subdue. In an environment where calories ruled survival, most predators likely shifted attention to easier prey. Picture the size difference from the perspective of a crocodilian. Smaller turtles could be clamped, rolled and shattered, providing a worthwhile meal. An adult Carbonomys, however, was as broad as a mattress, its edges rounded and smooth, leaving no convenient grip. Even if a bite chipped the carapace, cracking through it was another matter entirely. The energy wasted trying to wear down such armour didn't balance against the payoff, especially when softer shelled turtles or fish were abundant nearby. By living behind a shell that acted like an immovable wall, Carbonomys took most of the incentive out of predation. The same logic applies to its encounters with Titanoboa, though evidence here is more speculative. Titanoboa was a constrictor capable of wrapping around prey and suffocating it, then swallowing its victim whole. That tactic worked brilliantly on mammals, reptiles and fish, but with Carbonomies the odds changed. Titanoboa probably couldn't swallow a full-sized adult turtle, which dwarfed its likely gape size. Even if the snake coiled tightly around the shell, the layered carapace would have resisted crushing far better than a flexible rib cage. For the snake, such an effort would drain energy while yielding little reward. We have no fossilized proof of these animals clashing, but the physical limits involved suggest that showdowns between adults and Titanoboa would have been rare and inconclusive. Over millions of years, natural selection reinforced shell mass and thickness until the species reached a point where defense outweighed most offensive threats around it. Smaller turtle fossils show the opposite trajectory. Pitted shells, crushed sections, and broken carapaces tell the story of how fragile thin protection could be under Kerahon's predators. The outcome for Carbonomy's adults was an unusual position in the swamp's web of life. Instead of relying on speed or ambush tactics, it simply outlasted attacks. Predators saw easier meals and the turtle continued to patrol slow waters with little risk once maturity was reached. Its armor did more than preserve life. It shaped lifestyle dictating how the animal moved, basked, and even where it chose to feed. That constant protection defined its role, but the shell was just half of the story. The other half lay in its massive head and what it could do with it. What stood out immediately to paleontologists was the skull itself. Skull remains nearly 24 centimeters long, about 9.5 inches, or roughly the size of an NFL football. For a turtle, that measurement is extraordinary. And it demonstrated that Carbonomies carried much more than just defensive armor. The head was blocky and dense, built from thick bone and showed wide attachment points for major jaw muscles. This wasn't the skull of a slow grazer living on delicate leaves. Researchers interpret its shape as evidence of a powerful bite and a feeding strategy that went far beyond plants alone. Unlike modern tortoises that specialize in grazing or the river turtles that scrape algae and insects from rocks, Carbonomies had a skull suggesting high versatility. The broad surfaces at the rear and sides of the bones mark where massive muscles once anchored. These muscles would have operated like robust pulleys, giving the turtle significant leverage across its jaws. While scientists have not calculated bite force values, the consensus is, is clear. Carbonomize could crush foods that most other reptiles would leave alone. This anatomical evidence points not to speculation about precise numbers, but to comparative capability. The jaws were heavy, powerfully muscled, and adapted for endurance as much as quick action. To give a modern reference, researchers themselves have compared Carbonomies to an outsized version of a snapping turtle. This is not meant to suggest identical anatomy, but rather to provide a mental picture. Today, snapping turtles are infamous for strong jaws, capable of taking fingers and capturing live prey through ambush. Scale up that general model to an animal weighing hundreds of pounds and you approximate the ecological impact Carbonomies could have made. Its skull and beak formed a tool set, not only for seizing, but also for dismantling prey that most animals of its time couldn't process. Taken together, the skull anatomy and the variety of animals at Cherahon paint a picture of Carbonomies as an omnivorous generalist with an unusual range. It could crush the shells of freshwater mollusks, split through the bones of soft-shelled turtles, and prey on juvenile crocodilomorphs vulnerable while still growing. 
Fish abundant in swamp channels would have been easier targets and scavenging rotting carcasses provided one more way to extract nutrition. Its broad jaw surfaces hint that flesh bony fragments and hard cased plants could all be included in its diet. In practical terms, the huge turtle fed on whatever the swamp offered. Consider the strategy from a wider perspective. Many contemporaries survived by speed or stealth. Carbonomies instead made hardness itself its resource. It didn't matter if prey was armored or carrion was dried and stiff, the jaws could still reduce it to usable fragments. This approach released it from dependence on any single food type and allowed flexibility during seasonal changes in vegetation and prey populations. Flexibility in diet combined with its robust anatomy made it not only a survivor in the Paleocene swamp, but also one of its distinctive large omnivores. The true achievement of this skull was not just brute strength, but adaptability. In one structure, the wide, muscled block-like head of Carbonomies found a solution that enabled it to eat across categories, outlasting periods of scarcity and sidestepping direct competition with faster predators. Even in a swamp crowded with giants, this capacity to make food out of forms others left alone gave it a unique foothold. However, its resilience was no match for the massive ecological changes. Scientists believe Carbonomy's extinction was likely caused by several key factors, including climatic pressure that altered its habitat and the emergence of new species that were more effective competitors or predators. Ultimately, these factors disrupted the delicate balance Carbonomy's had maintained, causing it to gradually disappear from Earth's history. But the story of this turtle doesn't end there. Its legacy is found in the evolutionary lineage of certain modern turtle species that survived and thrived from a shared ancestor. This lineage is known to science as the Podocnemididae family. Most members of this family, including the giant Carbonomys, disappeared when the Paleocene ecosystem changed. But a few species survived becoming the silent inheritors who carry a small part of the ancient genetic blueprint. To understand Carbonomy's genetic legacy, we must look at its living relatives. Although they lack the immense size of their ancestor, these species still possess traits that link them to the past. Two notable examples of living descendants from the Podocnemididae family are the Madagascan big-headed turtle Erymnochelis, Madagascariensis, and the South American river turtles, Podocnemis, the Madagascan big-headed turtle with its large skull and powerful jaws, shows a resemblance to Carbonomy's omnivorous capabilities, which helped it survive in a competitive environment. Similarly, the South American river turtles, like the Amazon river turtle Podocnemis expansa, while much smaller, are still the largest freshwater turtles in their region. These turtles carry the genes for shell structure and adaptability that help their ancestors endure. Studying the DNA of these species helps scientists reconstruct the turtle family tree, uncover the genes that help their ancestors survive in a harsh environment, and understand how adaptation unfolded over time. The study of Carbonomy's genetic legacy is not just a historical lesson about a giant animal, it also has practical implications for conservation. By understanding which genetic traits helped this ancient turtle withstand predators and climate change, we can apply that knowledge to protect modern turtles that are now endangered. The evolutionary journey of Carbonomies and its relatives reminds us that life is a continuous process. Although Carbonomies is gone, the blueprint for its success, a thick shell, powerful jaws, and sheer resilience remains written in the DNA of the river turtles gliding through today's waters. Carbonomies was more than a large turtle. It was a perfect arrangement of survival traits in an age when few animals had guarantees. Its immense shell-crushing jaws and omnivorous diet show how durability combined with versatility to secure dominance. But ecosystems change and even the strongest design cannot outlast every shift. Climate pressure, habitat alteration or emerging species eventually ended its lineage. Studying these adaptations gives us perspective on how fragile the balance of life can be. In swamps ruled by crocodiles and Titanoboa, perhaps the most untouchable creature of all was a turtle.